So I told myself, no Yan, don't make a video straight after the Arsenal. I was gonna say loss, draw, felt like a loss. You'll be too angry, too reactionary. Do you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. So I've waited to today for a bit more of a measured and calm response. I don't feel calm. What's going on people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yan. I hope you are doing well and welcome to a video that I'm making on Chelsea's draw at home with the Arsenal. 2-2. Lots happened. A very frustrating affair that really only just highlights the lack of maturity across this side that's sort of carried over from Sari's reign into Lampard without the clutch sparkling winner of Eden Hazard and with a bunch of youth added who fair play have the drive but in terms of lacking maturity things have kind of boiled up into a difficult mess so what happened? Chelsea are playing Arsenal at home in the Premier League. Frank Lampard put out a lineup, which I think probably everyone was happy with. Kovacic was brought back in for Mason Mount, who's been poor of late. Kovacic had been poor previously, but then before that, he was like our player of the season, so it probably was time to bring Kovacic back in. Had Pulisic been fit, I imagine he'd be starting. Obviously wasn't fit, and I guess the same for Reese James. Wasn't quite ready to be reintroduced into the side, so as Pulisic moves back to right back, and Emerson moves to left back, which was probably the lesser of the two evils out of him and Alonso. Certainly, that's what people were thinking before the game. So, yeah, the lineup was fine. I actually think the substitutions were fine. Um, he made two attacking midfielder substitutions. People criticised Lampard for not playing two strikers in a game where you want to chase a goal. He did that today. Um, so really, in terms of personnel and substitutions, I'm cool with. In terms of this not scoring more goals, not taking more chances, I'm reluctant to blame Frank Lampard, you know. Like, sure, I'm not going to say he's perfect, but he's inherently not perfect because he's a new coach, sort of, developing. And he hasn't had any transfers yet, you know. He lost... Eden Hazard and Chelsea and he hasn't actually brought in one player yet so I'm not going to pin anything on the coach and he did say something about the whole Chelsea are like second in the league for creating chances but in terms of converting chances they are rock bottom so converting chances who I mean that has maybe that is some on the coach because that's a mentality thing that the coach needs to instill into the players but it is a personnel thing as well I think we do need to replace Eden Hazard for the finishing and we do need to bring someone in ruthless so these moments we do get the extra goal and alleviates pressure across the pitch so what happened in the game let's talk about it David Luiz was getting the treatment from the Chelsea fans understandably um, you know he looked like he started pretty well up until Mustafi sold him completely short when Tammy Abraham got through past him and I think he was like right I'm gonna tackle him I might concede a penalty here, but it looks like he's going to score anyway. Let's just try it. Mustafi's stitched me up. He fouls him, concedes the penalty, but because he's clear through, clear and obvious goal scoring opportunity, because he's rounded the keeper, it's a red card. I don't think Louise calculated for that, but yeah, in hindsight, I, I wasn't thinking, oh, he's off. But yeah, when you look back, you're like, yeah, he's off. So the narrative was set. The Judas of Chelsea has got a red card in like, in like half an hour in the game. Chelsea have got a penalty. Even though Burt Leno's in good form and dives the right way, Chelsea's superstar penalty taker, Jorginho, specialist, I think I was going to go for, tucks it away nicely in the right in the bottom corner. Chelsea are 1-0 up with a man advantage about half hour in. It's just poised to be a lovely evening. Right, also at this point, I just want to say shout out to Mikel Arteta because the Arsenal of the last 10 years, maybe even, would have just melted at this catastrophe with the red card penalty away from home, all that kind of thing. He definitely is doing something right at Arsenal and I think he deserves a shout out for that. And actually, for maybe the sort of following few minutes after going a man up, Chelsea do look like they're about to put Arsenal to the sword. In terms of how they're passing the ball around, you think, okay, they're going to take advantage of this one-man advantage, and everything is going to be okay. <sighs> okay, so the first goal, the first equaliser from Arsenal, you kind of can't necessarily legislate for. Sure, two really players went forwards when they just left Kante back. Really, you need to leave more than one because it became like a three-on-one or a two-on-one on the breakaway. And Golo Kante slips. All right, he's, it's sort of like a cruel irony of him playing in that conventional DM area, and he slips. A few people slipped on uh, the, the pitch that day. Kante slips, Martinelli goes through, he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. 
Iceman. Shout out to that young Brazilian kid because he looks superb. I mean, again, you could say with Kepa, the thing is when you're one and one, the, the, the guy with the ball, not the goalkeeper, has to score. It's not so much a thing of difficulty, it's just keeping your nerve. He kept his nerve. One all. Now, it was worrying at this point because you thought, okay, weak mentality Chelsea. And the whole theme of this video I want to talk about is game management. We'll talk about taking chances again in just a moment, but Chelsea, later on in the game, do take the lead back through Azpilicueta. It did seem like a captain's moment a little bit, like, oh, I'm going to clutch this moment, I'm going to score the goal. Chelsea are back, back in front. Breathe, everyone. Let's see it out. Kudos to Arsenal for coming back into it with 10 men and a good performance, but we'll take the points and run. Or will we? No, we won't. All right, so this is the bit that got me angry from a Chelsea perspective. Tammy Abraham takes a knock and goes down injured. Now, I don't have a go at him for being injured, but I want to have a go at the whole team for the way they dealt with this, including Tammy. Maybe stay down, get off the pitch. You know, because the way he is injured, not injured, up and down, the whole concentration level of the Chelsea 11 drop, get confused, and bear in mind, when they're all getting confused, and they shouldn't do, they absolutely shouldn't do, but they have, Arsenal are like in elite Terminator equaliser mode. So that's Terminator equaliser mode versus, oh, is Tammy alright? What are we doing? We're probably alright, we've won this game, yeah? Bellerin showed the space of Stamford Bridge to cut in on, granted, his weaker foot, but still to curl what is a lovely finish into the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the goal. Again, maybe Kepa can do a bit better here, but it was curving right into the corner. I mean, we can talk about Kepa in a minute, and I'm going to, but in terms of this finish, it just shouldn't have been allowed to hit that. Just kick the ball out, man. Where's the, where is like the senior player? It says, look, Tammy's down. Emerson, you boot it into Rose Ed. Everyone calm down, get your shape back. Let's see this game out. No, 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 chaos. Chaos and confusion. All right, man, this is why I'm reluctant to blame Frank Lampard. I don't think he's a perfect coach. I, like, obviously, like most Chelsea fans, adore the man, and I really, really hope it can work just because he'll have the desire and drive to be a lot. He wants what's best for the club. He doesn't want what's best for the individual, like, mercenary coaches. Like, you know, we all love Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte, even Maurizio Sarri, but ultimately, they want what's best for themselves, and... Frank Lampard's this unique new opportunity that he genuinely wants what's best for the club. And I've seen enough from him, from Derby and in Chelsea this season from overachieving in many ways to think, yeah, this he can do it. But it's gonna be so, so frustrating and everyone's gonna turn on all sorts of parties here when there's no seniority or maturity on that pitch to just do the basics, see games out, just see games out, kick the ball out when your striker's injured, waste time, you're ahead. Just don't be idiots. So Chelsea can't finish chances. Fair enough, say we concede that Bellerin goal and we got a bit unlucky with the Kante slip doing his best Steven Gerrard impression, lol. But really, Chelsea should have capitalized with the man advantage and the home advantage and just being ahead and pulling Arsenal apart. And Because once they dug in, they turned into Newcastle away. Do you know what I mean? In many ways, they had two shots, they scored two goals, but you can't critique them for that because they played the game exactly how they should have. Chelsea taking chances. Lampard explains how he can't practice finishing anymore. Apparently, like, what did he say in the press? Are, like, second highest chances created in the league, bottom of the table, in terms of converting said chances. That really is a personnel issue, isn't it? And, you know, bring in a striker in January, I guess, but we'll have to watch what happens there and keep tabs on Edison Cavani and indeed anyone else who are having talks with the Blues at the moment. But I put it off for a little while. Let's talk about Kepa, Aditha Balaga. Aditha Balaga, just Kepa, let's talk about Kepa. Now again, this game isn't gonna necessarily highlight his poor form of late, because those two goals, I think I've explained the situation with those two goals. But he doesn't inspire confidence. He had a few shaky moments early doors where he couldn't just put his foot on the ball. Man, like, all right. I watched Kepa loads live. I saw loads of games at the bridge last season. I've seen him a few times this season. And I think he's really talented as a goalkeeper. When in confidence and in form, his footballing ability is very, very good. His timing off his line is very good. And we know he's a good shot stopper when he's in form. We've seen him make the saves, like the superb saves, whether it's penalties or it's from open play. 
he can do it. And we know he's good. I mean, Spain made him the number one, although I'm not sure how long that's gonna last if things keep going like this. If not, they've already made a decision. But the point is, he's done it. He's done good things. But we've all seen the Sky Sports article where he's like 8,000th in the world for being a bad keeper this season. His expected saves or whatever. So it's not even shot space, because at first I was like, yo, Kepa, he's getting carved open by a poor defense. People are one twoing around him. Of course he's conceding the shots he's facing. Bad defending. But no, it's the XG, or what is it, like the expected saves metric as well, saying, look, he should be making these saves, which he's not. Things are getting a little bit worrying. What do I think? Well, I have no idea, because you, you bench a 70 million pound Goalkeeper. Chelsea will want to protect their investment and not make it look like a bet. Well, it's not looking good at the moment anyway. But, you know, I think most Chelsea fans would be like, yeah, bring Cavalera in for a few games. You know, didn't Bra uh, Bravo, didn't Pep Guardiola do that with Bravo? He brought in Cavalero when Bravo was just really, really bad before he then bought Edison. So it's a difficult one. And what's really frustrating for me is Chelsea just sold Marin Bolka, the 20 year old, but we sold him when he was 19, to PSG. Six foot six, great shot stopper, very strong, good self belief in a goalkeeper. He would have been perfect to just, look, just play him. And I think actually, I read, I don't know if this is true, but I did a video on it a while ago, how apparently. Frank Lampard actually wanted to sell Kepa. I mean, I think without a replacement in the transfer ban, maybe, maybe not, but I think he wanted a new goalkeeping coach. I think there were huge concerns from Frank Lampard's perspective regarding Kepa, Riza Balaga, but he, you wouldn't know that in mid-season because he just always protects his players. He's like, oh no, no, he's done good things. He'll know if he's done mistakes, which is the right thing to do as a coach generally. But man, yeah, there is problems and there's concerns, so... Ugh. Anyway, there's my rant regarding Chelsea. No game management, no maturity, and no finishing! But we move, right? It's still in its infancy. Somehow Chelsea is still in the top four. We qualified from the Champions League, and we do have some exciting youngsters. To be honest, it was a draw against Arsenal. We've taken four points off him this season. It's fine. It's just frustrating in what actually happened in the game. Let's see what happens. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Get down in the comments below. Remember, if you enjoyed my content today, please do like the video. Sub if you are new. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.